I was a dissident in Soviet Union, and I had an invitation from United States uh, in 1975, I received this invitation. In 1976, I was given the, the exit visa, and I was leaving for uh, New York that day, and I was come to take uh, my passport, and I was ready to fly. My family was already in airport waiting for me. The time on sidewalk I was here moved over or ran over by car um, it was fabricated by KGB they wanted to kill me and not to let me go and I was taken to hospital uh, doctors did anything they could to help me, but I was declared dead. Yes, and I was taken to hospital. Uh, doctors did anything they could to help me, but I was declared dead. But it was not bothering me. I saw my body and I hated it, and I didn't want to come to my body back. It was amazing that I, I, I was never leaving my body too. I was everywhere who thought about me, but I was with my body. It means that I, I was not leaving the one part for another. I was everywhere at the same time. I could be in New York, I could be in Longview, Texas. I could be uh, in uh, Moscow, I could be in, in Tbilisi, Georgia. In any place, there was no distance and time at that time with me. I could communicate with the children with very little children who couldn't speak and who couldn't walk and who were very little and just coming from that place where I was going. And this was amazing communication with them, uh, spiritual communication. We, we never spoke in words, we spoke in, in uh, mental communication. And uh, she had broken hip and nobody understood why she was crying so loud. And uh, the doctors and his parents were very concerned about this. And I said, don't cry anyway. Nobody will understand why do you cry. And she, she stopped crying and she uh, smiled, you know. And, and it was incredible experience for that people who were around and they looked at her and said, what's happened? Why she's not crying at this time? I want to tell them that, you know, she has this disease, this happened with her, but I couldn't communicate with them. After the third day when I was um, back to my body, and after three days when I could speak, I said to them that, you know, your daughter is uh, crying because of this. She has a broken hip, and, you know, and uh, this is the diagnosis which you are seeking, on, you know, and they, they found that it was truth, you know. They were shocked and they were surprised. I have this pain and I'm in darkness. I cannot see anything. Then I cannot move hand, then I cannot move my body. And then I understood that I have not them. But I am. And it scared me. Fear. Unknown. Why are all people afraid of darkness? because they don't know what is in darkness. The fear of darkness is because of unknown. Ununderstandable makes you to be afraid of something. That's why I was afraid too. I was afraid of this darkness. I was afraid of being there. But more afraid was that I was somewhere without my body. But I was. And I was a scientist, you know. I worked on idea of psychology and uh, languages, you know. I learned uh, physics, I learned chemistry, I learned many other physiologies, uh, anatomy, and uh, all it was based on dialectical materialism, historical materialism. And in my idea, it was impossible to 
to be somewhere without your body. Where is my main component, my life, my body? You know, I was scared to death. <laughs> but I was already dead. And this, that was the amazing feeling to understand that you are, but you are not, if you think you are. If I think, I thought, I am. But if I am, and if I think, why cannot I think positively what's happening around me? And I began to think about light. I saw light outside of darkness, and it shocked me. But the first, first feeling which I had was to come to that light. The first thought which came to me was to go into this light. And I had that movement. Particularly, very great thing happened with me. It was that you know, I saw my parents, my real parents, and I understood that they were killed. And they were killed by KGB in Moscow, and I was happy of this. It's, it sounds very ridiculous, but you know, it, I was happy because I was thought that I was a, a, a abandoned by them. Um, these patients will tell us that in the closing moments of their life, often in presence of this being of love who is with them, that they see a panorama before them, which consists of every single thing that they've ever done in their lives, from the moment of their birth right through the time of their close call with death. And they say that they see it all simultaneously, not with the events and temporals. So I saw all my life, but it's in that dimension which uh, cannot be described. This was holographical view of uh, being inside of your life and then being as a, uh, as a viewer, participating the play of theater, which happening there. But it is you, and you know that you are this. This is the main message which I brought back, that love is what can be, cannot be changed. This is everlasting. I saw life as an infinite life, infinite light, as an everlasting being. We, we cannot die because we are already created for to live forever. The dimension of spirit is everlasting life. Death does not exist. Don't be afraid. Death is only the part as a station, railroad station, where you come always to go to another life. 